In wood turning, you often end up with lots of little pieces of timber left over that are just too good to throw out. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use those pieces of timber to make little Christmas bells. The piece of timber I'm starting with is, is some red cedar. It's about 30mm diameter and about 50mm long. So to start off, I'm going to bring, I've, I've put a little cross to show where the centre should be. I'll bring the tail stock up just so I get it pretty close to where that centre should be before I lock off the chuck. In, in a four jaw chuck you always tighten from both sides. This is due to the mechanical mechanics of the chuck to make sure it's gripping the timber nice and tight. First thing we'll need to do is position the tool rest nice and close to the timber Always hand rotate the chuck to make sure it's clearing the timber. The tools I'll be using to make the Christmas bell are the roughing gouge. The roughing gouge will simply be used to make this piece of timber round. Most of the shaping then for the inside of the bell will be done with a spindle gouge. And the outside of the bell will be a combination of a spindle gouge and a skew chisel. Let's get turning. Lathe speed will be around the 1700 RPM because I'm working quite close to the uh, centre of the lathe. Always remember your safety that the hand rotate the piece before you turn the lathe on to make sure it's clearing the tool rest and wear your face shield. The cut I'm doing will be to start from the outside and sweep downhill. This means I'm cutting across the fibres rather than cutting into them. I can tell when it's round by placing the tool on it, seeing if I can hear any vibration little bit of vibration at this end because it's not quite round. I'm also watching the area of the timber away from the tool to give me the indication of how I'm shaping it. One round stock. Oh, there's a little bit just here. We'll take one more cut. Now I want to true up this end and the easiest way to do that is with the skew chisel. I'm going to present the tip of the skew chisel onto the timber just near the end and then raise the handle with the bevel running in the direction of the timber and the cut. So now I need to reposition the tool rest so that I can do that, that cut on the inside. We're going to shape the inside of the bell first. Tool rest should be a bit below centre so that when the spindle gouge is coming into the work, it's lining up with the centre of the timber. I'm going to start off over here with the flutes quite vertical to create a little groove and then I'll sweep it in towards the middle. Once I've got that little groove I can roll the tool back a little bit and that's presenting the cutting edge at about the, the one o'clock position to do the cut for me. Now 
Another way that we can do that cut is to bring the tool in flat and then sweep it up to the rock towards you and out. Starting off with it flat, roll the tool over and sweep it up towards you. It's a quicker method for cutting inside there. You just need to make sure you're picking up that centre of the timber and then sweeping out. Clear the tool so we can see what we're doing. So let's test now for the depth. Pencil works fine for that. I'm, I've got a depth. Yeah, I can go maybe, maybe one more cut. So let's make sure we've marked that where it, where that is, so we know that we're cutting the top of it correctly. So that's where the inside finishes. Now I'm going to swing around and start working on the outside. Tool rest can come a little bit higher from where I'm working here. And same technique, I'm going to be working into where the top of the bell is going to be by using, once again, the edge of the tool. In this case, because I'm coming in this direction, the cutting edge is going to be around the 10 or 11 o'clock position on the tool. Make sure that everything is clear. So as I, I start the cut, to get it towards the middle, I'm going to be raising the tool back at the tool handle. Come in the other direction to clear the waste away. Again, I'll be constantly switching from one direction to the other as I work towards the centre. Give it a need to give the outside also a bit of curvature, so it's not curved all the way through, just like it is on the inside. Once I'm getting close to the centre, the tool is being rolled over so that the flutes are almost vertical. I can do something similar to that with the skew chisel, using the, the, the long point, bring that just the tip of it in and roll the tool around so it comes in nice and tight. The top of the bell will need to have a little knob on it so that there's an area if I wish to I can drill a hole through it for hanging onto the tree. So now looking at that top area, what I can do is, with the skew chisel, come in tight, 
bring it, drop the handle down across the top of the knob and then bring it in tight again. The idea here is not go too fine because we've still got have to sand and finish this before we end up cutting it off the lathe. So sanding is probably okay to start sanding that now and I'll start with 320 grit this being a nice soft red cedar 320 is fine enough just turn the lathe speed down to about 700 that allows the paper to work best I'll just move the tool rest out of the way a little bit give it a bit of a sand inside Seven hundred is also uh, slow enough so that if you, you are not generating too much heat, you can burn your fingers as well as the, the timber. So just work that edge now into that fine groove. And then I can jump to the next grit size of 400. If you're doing a timber that's a bit rougher, or, or harder, you might need to cut start down as low as 1, 120. And the principle then is that as you are moving up in grit sizes, you halve the, the size that you were using and add it on. So if you had 120, the next grit size would be 140, 180, sorry, etc. Making sure I use a nice clean section of the paper. quite a nice piece of little red cedar you might decide that you want to enhance that a little bit more here's a little trick on how you can enhance any piece of turning relatively simple I'm going to put the speed back up a little bit and use the skew chisel just to make a couple of fine little grooves in there put it on its side will give us a sharper deeper V And then with some fine wire, um, and this is a piece of stainless steel, but copper wire works pretty good as well. I'm going to hold that into that groove and the friction there will end up making it nice and dark. Be careful what you do with the wire afterwards, it's still hot. And now just gently touch the paper back around. Now we can apply our finish. In this instance I'm going to use some Danish oil. I like to wear a glove when I'm applying the finishes just to protect my hands. And paper towel works quite well as an applicator for these sorts of finishes, as does some flannel, so old pyjamas or anything like that. So with the Danish oil, I'm going to need just dip it, the paper towel in there to get a nice liberal amount on the, on the paper towel, and then dab it on the inside. And this is where the turning really comes good, because you can see those lovely colours leaping into life as you apply your finishes. It's one of the joys of turning. So working it into that fine groove there, Then I run the lathe and let the, the paper towel just take off any, any excess. It also burnishes it just slightly, but more importantly it's just taking off any excess. And ideally I would leave that then for about half an hour before coming back to apply a second coat and that would be all that you would need. But for now let's continue on and um, assume we've done that and we're going to take it off the lathe and this is where the skew chisel can come in very nicely because I can cut into that very fine cut to part it off there I need to gently hold my hand around it grabbing it so that's going to fall into my hand as it comes off that last little section
And there we have one Christmas bell. Side will give us a sharper, deeper breeze. 